Sounds Digital. Congrats to you. You've probably spent some quality time working on your HubSpot score or lead score, as you might want to call it, and you've put some properties there. You've associated values with different particular with different behaviors that people can have on your website and with your brand more generally. Now we want to take a look and see if that actually pans out in the real world, looking at some data with the actual contacts inside of your portal. How are we going to do that? All right. So first off, we're going to jump into your contacts, and then we're going to add a couple columns to the contact dashboard. We do that by going to the Actions dropdown, Edit Columns, now we're going to look for that HubSpot score, of course. If you didn't see that coming, we're going to add that to the columns. And now we're also going to add the life cycle stage. Ultimately, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of analysis to see if the HubSpot score seems to align with our life cycle stages. So now that we've added those both, we're going to need to do some analysis inside of Google Sheets or Excel. To do that, we can export this data by going to Options dropdown and export. You choose the file format, HubSpot will send you an email, or if you wait patiently, you will see a link pop up in your HubSpot instance. Let's run over to Excel. Once you see your Excel document here, you are going to see a lot more fields than this. I just have first name and the score and their life cycle stage. Especially if you have a manageable number of contacts, you're going to want to leave the names, the companies, et cetera, et cetera, um, so that you're able to identify outliers that you might want to remove from your overall analysis, or when you want to dig into an individual or multiple life cycle stages based upon the averages that we're going to derive from these numbers, that you can do so and see you know, what might be going awry or what's going really well with an individual life cycle stage. So what I do is I take each life cycle stage and find the mean, median, and mode. Um, each of these things are going to have a benefit to you. Just practically speaking, we find that those values by um, typing in equals average plus the range of numbers that are associated with that life cycle stage. And then we can also do equals median with the range and equals mode with the range. Our goal here is once we've mapped out each of the life cycle stages, what we want to see is progressively higher numbers as you move through life cycle stages. And when you see anomalies where maybe a particular life cycle stage is a little bit off, that's a good indication that you need to dig in deeper to individual contacts within that life cycle stage and see if there's something unique going on. Maybe they're taking behaviors that other life cycle contacts and other life cycle stages are not that you're not accounting for inside of your HubSpot score. For example, I recently worked with a client where um, we took these numbers, we charted them out, and of course you're welcome to chart them out if you're a visual person. If you're okay just to look at the numbers, that's fine, just the same. It's not like we're looking at a huge uh, spreadsheet of data when we condense it down to the averages that um, it, it, you don't necessarily need to be worried about being super clean with your data as we're running through this and rinsing and repeating um, as we make modifications to our HubSpot score. So I recently worked with a client. We charted this out, and it went up and ascending in a nice clean line, except for marketing qualified leads. There was something going on there. So we dug into individuals, individual contacts that were associated with that life cycle stage and found, as I just noted, that they were doing some behaviors and engaging with the brand in a different way that we weren't accounting for in the HubSpot score. So we were able to go back, make some tweaks, make some changes to, um, and then run this analysis one more time. And then we saw what we would expect to see which is higher scores associated with an MQL compared to a lead, but still lower than our SQLs. Of course, we're going to see some outliers of individual contacts that are in life cycle stages, but these averages, we want to typically see them go up and up as we progress in life cycle stages. Some other things that you might 
identify from this analysis. So for example, here I see that the mode is very low. So even though I've got means, mean and medians that are relatively close to each other in a relatively close range, I've got some, there's something goofy going on here. Why are so many people in this life cycle stage so much lower um, when I look at the mode? which means there's a lot of people who aren't engaging with my brand in this life cycle stage compared to other ways of looking at averages. Why is that the case? Is there a good reason for that? And so maybe I'm not doing a good enough job of engaging people in this life cycle stage and I need to provide, um, and, and so it's not necessarily a HubSpot score problem, but it's a, a marketing and or customer delight problem. Uh, maybe it is how you're actually generating your HubSpot score, and you need to look at the point values that you're attributing to properties. Something else that you might be able to do with this data, when you see nice clean ranges where you know, maybe subscribers seem to live in a realm of looking at the mean and the median of 10 to 20, or whatever the number is for you, now you can actually create some sort of, um, or, or a lead or an MQL has this nice a clean range of HubSpot scores, you can then think about potentially automating life cycle stages based upon HubSpot scores too. So all these things kind of work together and this analysis can really help you pressure test your HubSpot score and it can also lead to some other things that are gonna make life a little bit easier for you as you move forward with your inbound and growth strategies. I hope this has helped. I hope this has helped pressure test your HubSpot score. If you have some other ways that you analyze your HubSpot score to make sure that it's actually doing what you want it to do, I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to comment below.